We're going to move into a time of hearing some God stories. Uh, we have three people who are getting baptized uh, this morning, and so we get to hear uh, here at the vineyard when you get baptized, we get to hear a snippet of what uh, God has done in your life. And so we have three of those this morning we're going to hear uh, of. So I'm going to invite Jonathan and Sanders and Clinton to come up. Jonathan, why don't you come over? Everybody say hi, Jonathan. Hey. Okay, you ready? Okay, go ahead. Yep. All right, I think we're good now. Does it work? Okay. <laughs> good morning, my name is Jonathan. Before I found Jesus, I was full of hatred, anger, sadness, frustration, guilt, and was lost. I felt alone and lonely in a dark world. I personally did not have a great childhood and every corner I turned, something always seemed to go wrong. I'm a survivor of many battles of abuse, rape, neglect, bullying, drug abuse, and suicidal attempts. I used to attend church growing up with my father and sisters. However, I never really paid attention or pursued God. Ever since I was a little toddler through my freshman year, I really struggled. During my freshman year, I broke and gave up on everything. However, if a blessing from God was not put into my life a few years prior and stood by my side, I would not be here today and have gone as far as I have. This beautiful woman standing next to me is my stepmother. Without her in my life, through my dark times, I would not be where I am today. No matter how hard I made things or disappointed her. She constantly showed me the love of God and Jesus. She never gave up on me or the calling God has for my life. To all of my family, no matter how, much, how badly you all have hurt me or have hurt you in my past, I love you all and, the, and so does God. I do forgive you all and I Hope God will show you all how to forgive me. I have seen God move and change my father to be a better man, and I am glad to see that. Just as you say, a father's love never ends. My love never ends for you, no, no matter our past. The more I pursued God and Jesus, the more he showed me to to let my pains for my past build me up a hundred times stronger and a million times wiser. God has called, me, called upon me to be a leader, teacher, a warrior, a soldier, and a protector All of, for all of his children. I am here to say I am done running and nothing will stop me from what God has called me to do. pretty good. Sanders. Everybody say hi, Sanders. Hi, Sanders. Right up here. Oh. Otherwise, they won't be able to hear you. Okay. A little closer. A little, a little closer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I worked with a gentleman named uh, Jeremy for quite a few years, and uh, he invited me to come to church service uh, quite a few times. And so one day he invited me to come to a cookout here at a vineyard. And I finally decided to come. And there I met Pastor Mark and I met Pastor Steve. And I was completely impressed with them. And so I attended the service the next week. And I truly felt that I was at home here. Although I grew up in church, I honestly never really learned anything. Uh, Ryan and Keith have been a blessing to me, and my life has changed for the better. 
and I, I truly realize that Jesus Christ is my Savior. All right, Clinton. Everybody say hi, Clinton. Hi, my name is Clinton Warden. I was a responsible alcoholic. I worked hard, drank hard for 37 years. I spent all the money I made on having a good time and never worried about others, only myself. One day I got very sick and couldn't work anymore. Slowly I lost everything I had, lost my home. I was worrying all the time, angry, and didn't know what to do. I prayed to Jesus and said, I leave it up to you. No more worrying or anger. Well, I live in a shelter now and don't need anything. Seen a site, sign that said Bible study at six. And I met Mike, Jeremy, and Chris, and life has become so much better. Now I get my disability and life is getting a lot better. And I found good friends and good feelings about myself and kindness and love that have been shown to me from others in church and always feeling so much better every time I worship God and read the Bible. Isn't God amazing? Yeah, he'll get into somebody's life and their life just turns completely around. And so we're going to, uh, as we prepare for baptism, three gentlemen are going to walk over to the tank and a couple of people will get in with them. I'll, I'll share what they're going to do uh, as they get in. They're going to ask them three questions. Now, we've already asked them these three questions, but we ask them again. We ask them, is Jesus Christ the Savior of the world? And they've answered previously yes, and they'll answer that again. And then they ask, if, is Jesus Christ your own personal Savior? And they'll answer. And then the last question, which I love this last question, it's a question that uh, each time we have baptisms, it reminds me in my own life as a follower of Christ, for the rest of your life, to the best of your ability, will you follow Jesus? And they answer yes, and then they'll baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we get to participate and celebrate along with that. And so you can take a picture or cheer, but we're going to sit as we do that and uh, sing and enjoy what God is doing. So let's pray for these folks. So Father, we thank you for what's going on, what has gone on for lives that have been changed. God, we celebrate with heaven this morning as we watch and witness baptisms. In Jesus' name, amen.
worshiping over here on this side of the auditorium, I was, I was thinking and praying that we just sang, I don't know if you picked up on this, but the three testimonies that we heard this morning really had a focus on, they tried other things, but there literally is nothing better than Jesus. There is nothing better than Jesus. I know in, in my early 20s, I tried a lot of things to try to fill the, the hurt I had in my heart, and those other things didn't last very long. It was only Jesus. And so as I was praying over there, I, I, I got this prompt, maybe there might be someone in the room as you were thinking about your own life, as you heard those testimonies, you've tried some other things that are not working. And today is the day that you're really in earnest, deeply in your heart, you really today is the day as we sang that, that there is nothing better than Jesus. And so I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna give you an opportunity. I'm not gonna ask you to do anything weird, but as we pray, I'm just gonna ask you to raise your hand if that's you. And so I'm gonna ask everybody, just bow your heads for a second. So Holy Spirit, we invite you here. And if there is, Holy Spirit, someone in the room, this is like the easiest invitation ever, but it could change your life. And so if there's someone in the room and you deeply earnestly want to follow Christ for the first time, or it's a recommitment, I want you to raise your hand. Raise it a little, I see that, yeah. No one else is looking at you, thank you. So God, we invite your presence into those people right now. They have tried other things and it has not worked. And so today they're lifting their hand to commit to say to you, Lord, that you are the only thing that will work. There is absolutely nothing better So as our heads are bowed, I'm gonna, here in a second, we're gonna close, but those of you who have your hand raised, instead of greeting those around you, I'm gonna ask you to sit down and fill out that Orange Connect card and just put committed on there and turn that in at the end of service. So Lord, we thank you for this activity in Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna interrupt worship and move into a time of uh, baptisms. And here at the Vineyard, when we do baptisms, we have uh, folks share a little bit of what's going on in their life after they said yes to Jesus. And so we call them God stories around uh, the vineyard. And so we're gonna hear four, who wants to hear some God stories this morning? We're gonna hear four of them. And so uh, Katie, I'm gonna invite you to come up. Katie is the first person to share. Everybody say hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. All right. Hello. Uh, okay, I grew up knowing of Jesus. I could understand that he was a big deal, but I didn't know why. It wasn't until my personal spiritual journey began that I started to truly grasp the good news that Jesus brought. Before I knew Jesus, I was very unhappy with life. Relationships were difficult for me. I was stressed, anxious, and depressed. Those dark times led me to seek my creator, the reason for my existence. Unfortunately, that led me down a rabbit hole of relying on my own understanding of life. It and at it inevitably caused me to be distracted by myself. The focus turned away from what God called me to do to what I wanted to do. I fell short of God's glory many times. Although I felt I knew God, there was still something missing. Enter Jesus. Since knowing Jesus, he has taken me by the hand and showed me who I am. I am a product of a gracious and just God. I know this because our creator came into human form and sacrificed himself on a cross that was meant for me. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. He's asked me to use my free will to serve him. Today, I'll be cleansed of my unrighteousness and brought back to life through my Savior. I'll live this day forward with Jesus at the front of my heart and mind in all that I do. Okay, Abby, come on up. Everybody say hi, Abby. Hi, Abby. Hi. You're going to do great. Don't be nervous. Go, Abby. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> hi. Uh, 
I grew up in a very um, emotionally and physically abusive home. I knew about Jesus, but we never really spoke a lot about him. I didn't really know him too well, just that he makes things happen for a reason. One day after an event with my dad, I screamed at God and told him it was his fault and that I hated him. After I went to high school, I started smoking weed, but I went to youth group trying to find forgiveness from what I said when I was little. As things got worse at home, I ran away for two weeks to do drugs with my friends. I moved around from my dad's house to other family members. I found God and Jesus during that time. I prayed for an end to the pain, whether it was death or deliverance. I moved to my grandparents' house and began talking to God again, crying to him and asking him for peace. I studied my Bible and read it every day. I'm shaking so much. You see my knee moving. <laughs> crying to him and asking him for peace. I studied my Bible and read it every day. I moved back home and then to my sister's home. God did deliver me. He brought me to a place that makes me feel safe. He took away my addiction of smoking weed and is continuing to bring me closer to him. I found this church and I want to fully commit to Jesus who saved me. All right, Spencer, come on up, Spencer. Everybody hey, say hi, Spencer. Good morning, everybody. Growing up, my, immediately family, my immediate family didn't really go to church, but I do remember church always being an option. I would attend with extended family members or friends when invited, but never really took it to heart. I would say I've always believed in God, but having a relationship with Jesus was not something I seriously pursued. As a young man, you could find me lying, cussing, cheating, and drinking, living your typical party lifestyle for decades of my life. In 2008, I had a motorcycle accident that reminded me how short life can be, yet I still didn't make the connection. In 2011, while standing in the nightclub talking to a close friend, there was a moment where I realized how badly my life needed to change. I then spent the next 10 years struggling to be better on my own, failing miserably, and still feeling empty inside. I knew what was missing, but being my hard-headed self, it wasn't until March of this year when I started attending the vineyard that I returned home. It was during the May Newcomers group that I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart, felling that emptiness. Since then, my life is more peaceful, more focused, and more meaningful. My earthly relationships have prospered, and I now have a true relationship with Jesus, reading his word and talking to him every day. Alexa, come on up, Alexa. Everybody say hi, Alexa. Hi. So before coming to know Jesus, my life was filled with anxiety and worry. There were times where I felt like I didn't deserve happiness or to have good things happen to me. In the past year, I experienced the loss of three amazing people in my life, two of those being my grandfather's. In the midst of that loss, my marriage began to crumble. I got to a point where I felt stuck in my situation with no hope of anything getting better. My anxiety was higher than it had ever been. Then a friend invited me to join them here at the vineyard. As I began attending more, I felt Jesus' presence more. Soon I began praying or listening to worship songs when I felt anxious or unworthy. Jesus began doing amazing things in my life, reconnecting me to family, providing hope in ways out of unhealthy situations, and relief from anxiety. Jesus has shown me that I am worthy of love, joy, and happiness, even in the midst of anxiety, stress, and divorce. Since accepting Jesus back into my life, I have not taken a single medication for anxiety. I have a new job I love, and I am beginning to see my worth and learn to love myself again just as Jesus loves me. Okay, as they come over here to the uh, tank that will baptize them, let me exp uh, that will baptize them. Let me explain what we're going to do. Uh, so, earlier we asked them uh, three questions. They'll be asked these three questions as they get into the baptismal tank uh, with a few of the staff members. The first question is, and you should consider these yourself. The first question that we've asked them is, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world? 
And previously they said yes, I'm sure they'll say yes again, and then we asked them, do you think that Jesus is your personal Savior? And then the last question, which I love, uh, is a question that we should all consider if you're followers of Jesus. For the rest of your life, to the best of your ability, will you follow after Jesus? And they said yes. And so then we'll baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You all get to uh, watch, maybe take a picture, and celebrate along with heaven what's happening here today. So let me pray, and then we'll get to baptism. So Father, we thank you for lives that have clearly changed. And so we pray for this time. Holy Spirit, would you do something incredible in Jesus' name? Amen.
interrupt us here before we go back into this song. So we just heard four really good stories about how other people tried to fill gaps and hurt in their life with other things. And the other things didn't work, but what did work was Jesus Christ. And so, and, and I love the fact that in the middle of this song, we, we were either just listening to or we were participating and singing, nothing is better than this. Nothing is better than Jesus. And so as we go back into this song, here's the invitation. You might be in the room realizing that your life, you have filled hurt, you have filled loneliness in your life with way too many other things. And today is the day that you want to fill that with Jesus, either for the first time, really for the first time. You may have thought earlier you were, nope, today's the day where you want to recommit. I'm going to invite you while everyone else is singing to go to that side of the auditorium. Pastor Kathy will be over there and she'll just talk to you. You guys will pray, but do not miss this opportunity which means you might be in the middle of a row and you might have to nudge some people. Will everyone, will you move if someone nudges you? So four people, let's try that again. If someone nudges, let, let me explain this. If someone nudges you, that means that they want life change and be connected with Jesus Christ. Will you move? Yes. And so, so I'm gonna pray and then we'll do this. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and move upon this place. And if someone wants a relationship with you, they'll know it because your heart might be racing. You might be thinking that it's not you. You might be thinking, there's no way I can nudge my neighbor, but God, we will celebrate when heaven, when someone nudges to get out of a row to commit their life to you. And so come Holy Spirit as we worship. As we worship, if that's you, come over to this side of the auditorium. God is turning graves into gardens right now. And so, God, we thank you for what you're doing. We pray, Father, that you would come upon that group and that you would turn stories of hurt into stories of celebration. Holy Spirit, we thank you for moving in this time. 
Oh, it was great. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.